I use this technique almost every time I implement hierarchical menus. It can be used in many other scenarios, but this is the best example from my experience. So let me tell you what I mean by hierarchical menus. Basically what it is is when you choose a choice from here, it changes these choices down here. Go back to California, you see different choices here. And I've done this through a really simple method. I normally wouldn't do it this way. I have only two tables, one where the data entry is done and one where the choices are made. Normally I'd have two choice levels here, have two tables, but I want to focus in on this example that I'm trying to teach you because it has nothing to do with pop-up menus or, or, you know, for the most sense. It wouldn't change whether you use one table or two tables. But let me show you how it works nonetheless so you really understand. There's the data entry. There's the choices. They're related by the state field, right? That's all it is. Very simple. Normally I do with the primary and foreign key, but again, I'm trying to do something very simple here. And then we'll come in here over to our list view, which has Every time California is entered, you can see there's a different city on it, right? Then we have Maine with two cities, Texas, Oregon, and so on. So that's our entry. So if we wanted a new one, we could put in California and put in Crestline, something like that. And as soon as we did that, it would appear over here in these choices. You can choose it. What I want to show you today is not that, but... Watch what happens when I change this to another state. This automatically empties, and it happens in both situations here. So I have two different versions of this. That's key because you don't want a value staying there and then mistakenly going, oh, I want California, and then leaving a main uh, city there. You don't want that to happen. You want it to erase the previous choice because it doesn't belong with the new choice here. So here's how I do it. This, the first way is the way I normally do it, and I'll tell you why I do it this way in a few minutes. Let's take a look at how it works, though. In Manage Database, in the field section, I have an auto enter. It's a calculated value with the option unchecked. In fact, you'll find out that probably, in, at least in my experience, about 99% of the time I uncheck this option. I wish it was unchecked by default, but it has to do with uh, legacy and how FileMaker used to work because this check mark didn't used to be here. And so it didn't have this option of overwriting itself over and over again. It simply would auto enter when the field was empty or when a record was new, basically. But that's just a little FileMaker history for you. Let's take a look at the formula here. And we'll see that we have evaluate, and we covered this in the last video, so if you want some more information on evaluate, you want to look at it as well. But it's pretty simple. There are two parameters here. One is the required parameter. There's only one required. These are the, this is the optional parameter here, the fields. I can put one or more fields in here. And what that does is tells the evaluate function to, to trigger when this field's modified. So this makes sense. I want, since this is attached, if you didn't notice, it's attached to the city field, right? I want this to trigger every time the state has changed because you can see, you may not completely understand this, but essentially what I'm resulting in is nothing. It's evaluating this formula as nothing. So putting a blank in there. And if you remember from the previous video, because I'm referring to not a field here, I have to put the quote function around whatever I want, because really all I want is this part, right? I want empty. But I had to put quote around it so it would see it correctly. And you get used to this the more you use the evaluate function and how to make, uh, whether it's a field versus, you know, uh, a formula that you typed in. But any formula you type in that's not a field reference has to have the quote function around it, or you have to double quote it. You could do something like this, I believe, would work also. Just to, It's just more clear when you have the quote function. So I tend to use that one in, uh, instead of just doing double quotes. So what happens every time the state gets changed? Empty gets entered in there, and that's it. Simple as that. Once you understand the the idea behind this, it's pretty simple. And I made a mistake here. What did I do? I've got too many parentheses there. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look at City 2. How does this one work? Well, it's a script trigger. You'll see if we take a look at this. Anytime this gets modified, 
on object modify. So it's a pop-up menu. I don't have to worry about typing. Nobody's going to be typing into it. So anytime it gets modified, it's going to run the script called Clear City. So we'll go into the script workspace, Clear City, really simple. Just put nothing into that City 2 field. That's it. So why do I like the first one better? Well, there's a couple reasons. First, it's schema level. It's in Manage Database. So that auto enter occurs no matter where I put this field. A script trigger, if I put it on multiple layouts, I'd have to attach a script trigger each time and I'd have to remember to do that. If I forget that it doesn't work the same as it does on two different layouts. You might have a, a data entry layout for you know, desktop machines like Macintosh and Windows and one for, let's say, FileMaker Go. You have to remember to do that. And I don't want to try to remember. I want to. I don't want uh, things to uh, to change from layout to layout in, in most situations. Some I do, but in this situation I don't. So there's one advantage. The other one is I don't like running script triggers if I can use some other feature, because script triggers tend to conflict if you get too many going at once. You could have 30 going at once and they work perfectly all harmoniously together, but you get the wrong two things going at the same time and, and you may spend hours. I've spent hours going, what the heck is this problem? And I find out it's a script trigger, two script triggers launched at the same time and interfering with each other. So I prefer to go with the auto enter whenever possible, but I show you the script trigger version because you may need it in some situation. It's about having as many tools on your belt as possible so you can pull it out at the right time.